Hello and welcome to this video on simplifying understanding and combining ratios. Now ratios on a simple level is just the relative size of different values. So if I said I have three times as many red sweets as blue sweets, I'm expressing a ratio because I'm talking about the relative size of my number of red sweets and number of blue sweets. Now let's just say that I had 10 red sweets and 15 blue sweets then I could say that the ratio of red sweets to blue sweets is 2 to 3. And what I mean by that is that for each two red sweets I have, I have three blue sweets. So let's just say that we have two red sweets and three blue sweets. I'm going to make my blue sweets just clear circles because I don't have coloured pens. Then for each two red, I have three I blue. Have blue. So if I had another two red, I'm saying for each two red, I have three blue. So it could be that I have four red sweets and six blue sweets. So I've managed to double each of these. I could have four could red, have red and six blue. Or I could keep going. I could have another two red. And because for each two red, I have three blue, I have to add three blue. So I've now got six red sweets and nine blue sweets. And they're still in the ratio two to three because for each two red, I have three blue. That means with a ratio, I can always times these numbers by whatever I like. If for each two red sweets, I have three blue. I could also say for each four red sweets, I have six blue. For each six red sweets, I have nine blue. And I could times these both by five to make that 10 red sweets and that 15 blue sweets. So this number of sweets is consistent with this ratio here. So I can simplify a ratio in the same way as I can simplify a fraction. I can divide or times these numbers by whatever I like, as long as it's the same number. So if we go to these first few questions here, if I want to simplify 6 to 8, well, I can divide these numbers by whatever I like. Well, they both have a common factor of 2, so I divide both of them by 2. And that gives me a ratio of 3 to 4. What about the second one? I have a ratio of 25 to 15. So that can mean for each 25 red sweets I have, I have 15 blue sweets. Now, what do they both have in common? They have a factor of 5 in common. So I could divide them both by 5. So the 25 divided by 5 is 5. And the 15 divided by 5 is 3. What about the second question? Leif has three sweets and Sheila 12 sweets. What is the ratio of Leif sweets to Sheila's? So the ratio of Leif to Sheila's sweets, well, Leif has three sweets and Sheila 12. Now, if Leif has three and Sheila has 12, you could actually write that as a ratio because you're saying for each three sweets that Leif has, Sheila has 12 sweets, which is true because Leif does have three sweets and Sheila does have 12 sweets. So then I could simplify this ratio in the same way. What do these both divide by? Well, they both divide by three. That divided by three is one and 12 divided by three is four. So that's saying for each one sweet that Leif has, Sheila has four sweets, which is true. Now, what about this question? Slightly different. 60% of Farmer O'Connell's sheep are white, and the rest, i.e. 40%, are black. What is the ratio of white sheep to black? Now, it might help to think of an actual number of sheep. Let's say that I have 100 sheep, because that makes finding a percentage of this easier. If 60% of the sheep are white, that means 60 are white, and the rest are black. So if there's 60 white, there must be 40 black. Now, what's the ratio of white to black sheep? Well, we could write 60 to 40, because for each 60 white sheep, there are 40 black sheep, which is true, because there are 60 white and there are 40 black. And then I can simplify that ratio in the usual way. Well, I can divide these both by 20. 60 divided by 20 is 3. 40 divided by 20 is 2. So the ratio of white to black sheep is 3 to 2. What about question four? This is where we have to combine ratios. So the ratio of boys to girls is three to four. I'm just gonna write that. Boys to girls, I'm just putting B and G there to help me remember what part of the ratio is what, because these numbers aren't reversible. I can't swap the three and the four, because if I said four to three, that means the ratio of boys to girls is now four to three. So that means for each four boys, there'd be three girls. So the order does matter. 
And the ratio of girls to adults is 5 to 6. So girls to adults, I'm going to add this here, is 5 to 6. What is the ratio of boys to adults? So I want the ratio of boys to adults. Now, in order to be able to combine these two ratios, I need those two middle numbers to be the same. Now, remember that you can scale ratios using whatever number you like. So, is there a way I could scale this ratio and scale this ratio so that these two numbers are the same? Well, what you do is you find the lowest common multiple of those two numbers. So, what's the lowest common multiple of 4 and 5? Well, it's 20. So, this, if I want to get this number to 20, I need to times both of those by 5. So that becomes 15, that number 4 becomes 20, and then if I want the 5 to become 20, I need to times this by 4. So 5 times 4 is 20, 6 times 4 is 24. So the ratio of boys to girls is 15 to 20, and the ratio of girls to adults is 20 to 24. So for each 15 boys, there's 20 girls, and for each 20 girls, there's 24 adults. So that means we can now combine this into one ratio. So the ratio of boys to girls to adults is 15 to 20 to 24. So that means the ratio of boys to adults, boys to adults, is 15 to 24. So boys to adults is 15 to 24. And you could simplify that ratio because they both divide by 3, so the 15 becomes 5 and the 24 becomes 8. Now what about the next question? There are x red sweets and y blue. The ratio of red to blue sweets is 1 to 3. Write an equation for x in terms of y. Now, if the ratio of red to blue sweets is 1 to 3, that means for each one red sweet, there's three blue sweets. And that means there must be three times as many blue sweets as red sweets. So let's write that as a sentence. There are three times as many blue sweets as red. Now, if I turn that to an equation, the number of blue sweets, i.e. y, is equal to three times the number of red sweets, so 3x. But we want x in terms of y. So if to get rid of that times 3 on the x, we divide both sides by 3, and that means that x is equal to y over 3, or you could just write a third of y. So the number of red sweets is a third of the number of blue sweets, which makes sense because there's three times as many blue sweets as red sweets. So be careful. The ratio of x to y is 1 to 3, but that doesn't mean that x is equal to 3y. It's actually the other way around, so you have to think about it carefully. Right, a few more questions. The ratio of boys to girls is 3 to 4. What fraction are boys? So that means for each three boys we have, for each three boys, I put boy, 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 we have four girls, so girl, 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 girl. Now, if we just had three boys and we just had four girls, what fraction of the children are boys? Well, we can see it's three out of the seven children, so it's three sevenths are boys. Now, you might think, well, what if there are more boys and what if there are more girls? Well, for each three boys, there's four girls. So if we add in another three boys, we would have to add another four girls. But the fraction of boys is still the same. We have six boys out of 14 children. But 6 over 14 is the same as 3 over 7. So it's still going to be the same proportion which are boys. What about 7? This is a difficult one. The ratio of males to females in a room is 4 to 7. Of the males, the ratio of boys to men is 2 to 3. What fraction of the people are boys? Now, we can use a similar approach to what we did in 6. We want fractions of amounts. So, if the ratio of males to females is 4 to 5, well, since we're talking about boys, let's think about what fraction of people are male. Let's say there happen to be 4 male people and 5 female people. So, that means 4 ninths of the people are male, because 4 out of the 9 people. And then, of the males, the ratio of boys to men is 2 to 3. So boys to men was 2 to 3. So what fraction of the males are boys? Well, 2 out of 5, 2 fifths of the males 
are boys. Because if we had two boys and if we had three men, two out of those five male people would be boys. So two-fifths. And again, it doesn't matter if you had more boys or more men, as long as you've got this ratio. So two-fifths of the males are boys, and four-ninths of people are male. So that means two-fifths of the four-ninths of the people are boys. Can you see that? Four-ninths of the people are male, and of that four-ninths, two-fifths of that four-ninths are boys. So do you remember that we can just turn that of into times? To find a fractional amount, we just think of of as times. So two-fifths times four-ninths, we just multiply the numerators. Two times four is eight, and five times nine is 45. So eight fifty-fifths of the people are boys. Now, this very last kind of question once cropped up in a, a mock paper, but it hasn't yet occurred in a GCC paper, so it might be a bit too hard, but you never know, you never know. It could be like the last question of a paper. So the ratio of Sheila's age to Leif's age is 2 to 3. In four years' time, the ratio will be 5 to 7. How old is Sheila now? So we've got a kind of changing ratio. The ratio of the ages was 2 to 3, they both aged by 4 years, and now the ratio of those ages is 5 to 7. Now you could sort of use a certain amount of trial and error. You could find two ages for Sheila and Leif, where then the ratio to 2 to 3. So it could be they're 2 years old and 3 years old, or 4 years old and 6 years old, and various kind of multiples of 2 and 3. But let's try and do it in an algebraic way. If the ratio of Sheila's age to Leif's age is 2 to 3, now, we don't know what the exact age is, but let's just say Sheila's age is 2x. Then Leif's age would be 3x. And the reason why this works is because let's just say that x was 1, then this age would be 2 and this age would be 3, which would be in the ratio 2 to 3. Let's just say that x was 2, then this age would be 4 and this age would be 6. And 4 to 6 is in the ratio 2 to 3. Well, if x was 3, then you'd have 6 and 9, and ages of 6 and 9 are in the ratio 2 to 3. So expressing the ratio 2 to 3 as the value 2x and 3x, we make sure we have two values which are in the ratio 2 to 3. So these are the actual ages. Now, they both aged by four years. So in four years' time, they will be, well, 4 more than 2x will be 2x plus 4, and Leif will now be 3x plus 4. And we're told that these two ages of 2x plus 4 and 3x plus 4 are in the ratio 5 to 7. Now, if their ages are 2x plus 4 and 3x plus 4, we could say the ratio of their ages is 2x plus 4 to 3x plus 4. And we're saying that's equal to the ratio of 5 to 7. Now, if we have two ratios which are equal, so let's say that A to B is equal to C to D, then what we can do is we can say that B over A is equal to D over C. Just to illustrate, let's just say I had two ratios which are the same, like um, 3 to 4 would be the same as 6 to 8. Those two ratios are equal. So if I did B over A, that over that, so if I did 4 over 3... Is that equal to d over c, which is 8 over 6? Well, 4 divided by 3 is the same as 8 over 6, because 4 thirds is the same as 8 6. So this works. We're going to need to use this. So let's apply it to this, these two ratios here. We can say that 3x plus 4 divided by 2x plus 4. So 3x plus 4 divided by 2x plus 4 is equal to 7 over 5. So it's equal to 7 over 5. We've now got an equation which we could solve to get x. So do you remember, if we have a fraction on both sides of the equation, we can do something called cross-multiplying. So we can say this times this is equal to this times this. It's called cross-multiplying because you can see that cross. So we've got 5 times 3x plus 4 is equal to 7 times 2x plus 4. Now if we expand out, we get 15x plus 20 is equal to 14x plus 28. Now we can collect the x's on one side, so if we subtract 14x, we just get 1x here. We could also subtract 20 at the same time, so if we subtract 20 from both sides, we just get 8 on the right-hand side, so we now know that x is 8. 
And we want to know how old Sheila is now. Now we said Sheila now was 2x. So Sheila must be 2 times 8, which is 16 years old. And I know that was a very difficult question.